Hey everyone, this video is about the HP 27S, which was introduced in 1988 as part of HP's Pioneer series of calculators. And the 27S has the label scientific on it, but it was really a do everything calculator, supporting scientific, statistical, financial operations, as well as date arithmetic and reminders. And this way, its name is a reference to uh, the HP 27 from 1976. And uh, the 27 was also, as its user manual put it, a calculator for all seasons and for the multi-dimensional professional. And the 27S was not programmable in the regular sense, uh, but does support the excellent HP solver, which, as we'll see, is surprisingly powerful. And physically, the 27S uses the same body as the other calculators in the Pioneer series. And it uses the same 132 by 16 dot matrix display and the Lewis version of the HP Saturn processor as the 17B, B2 and the 42S. And the Lewis processor didn't have internal RAM like the less powerful versions of the Saturn. Instead, it could interface with a 16-bit address bus and 8-bit data bus, uh, which allowed it to use external SRAM. <clears throat> and so the 27S has uh, 6,900 bytes of usable memory shared amongst variables and formula. Uh, so it wasn't as memory-constrained as many uh, other Pioneer models, uh, such as this 32S2. Uh, which only had a few hundred bytes of on-processor RAM. And all the Pioneer calculators had the same keyboard layout with 37 keys, uh, but with different key labels. And the 27S having only a single uh, blue shift key is quite sparse compared to, say, uh, the 32S2, uh, or even this more basic uh, 20S. And similar to uh, the other higher-end Pioneer models, uh, the top row of the keyboard are uh, all menu keys. Uh, the next two rows are mostly numeric functions. Uh, and then the following three rows are the keypad. <clears throat> but in conjunction with the blue shift key, these all display uh, different menus. And all the Pioneer keyboards are excellent uh, with very satisfying tactile buttons. Uh, on the back of the calculator uh, is the battery compartment that takes uh, three LR44 batteries, uh, and there are also uh, five rubber feet. Uh, it's quite difficult to take Pioneer calculators apart since they're not really designed to be re uh, repairable. They're held together by eight heat stakes or rivets uh, that are melted together. And it's quite easy to damage the housing uh, prying these apart. So I won't be able to show the internals this time. The basic usage of the 27S is interesting since it works a bit differently from most other algebraic calculators you might be familiar with. Uh, so if I type in 2 plus 3 times 4, <clears throat> you'll see that the full expression gets displayed. Uh, and I can either hit uh, the input uh, or the equals key uh, to evaluate it. Uh, and the order of operations is on it. Uh, if the expression is uh, longer than the line, <clears throat> uh, the display will uh, scroll. Uh, but there's no way to go back and uh, edit the left part of the equation. Uh, and after you have a result, uh, you can chain it uh, to a new calculation uh, by just typing another operand. And I guess up to here, things might seem relatively normal. Uh, but the first difference from most algebraics is around showing intermediate results. Uh, so say if I type 2 times 3, uh, as soon as I hit a times again, uh, the intermediate result uh, gets displayed. <clears throat> and this also happens uh, when you close a block of parentheses. And so uh, this is a kind of a hybrid between uh, algebraic calculators that display a single number at a time, uh, like say this uh, 20s. Uh, and um, 
calculators that uh, display an entire algebraic expression on one line, uh, such as this Casio FX4000P. And in some ways, the 20S, uh, 27S's model is closer to the 20S's uh, because functions that take a single argument are evaluated uh, post-fix style. Uh, so say to find uh, 2 times the sine of 45, uh, you would type 2 times, so 2 times, and then uh, 45 uh, sine. Uh, and then equals, and that's, that's the same as uh, on this 25s. Uh, whereas on the uh, fx uh, 4000p uh, sign is prefix. Uh, another difference is that Although the uh, 27S has a four-level result stack, uh, you can't actually go back uh, like on the uh, 4000P and edit the last algebraic expression. Uh, but you can uh, use the arrow keys uh, to scroll through uh, the stack history of results. And this hybrid algebraic model on the 27S might take it some getting used to, uh, and it's the same on the uh, 17B and B2. <clears throat> but it's worth remembering in 1988, only Japanese calculators uh, supported uh, full editing of algebraic formulae. And uh, the TI-68, um, which was the first Texas Instruments calculator to support uh, full algebraic entry, uh, was only released a year later in 1989. And the 27S is highly menu driven, so on the top row of uh, menu keys uh, we have the four apps. There's the solver, which I'll talk about later. Uh, then there's the statistics app, the time value of money app, and the time app. And so if we hit the blue shift and uh, the number 8, uh, we'll enter the statistics app. And it prompts for the first item in the series. And with the stats app, uh, you can have as many named series as you like. Uh, so you can set the name for the current series uh, using the name menu. Uh, and here we can see how text strings can be entered on the 27S. And this is done through a hierarchical menu of letters and symbols. Uh, so let's uh, select uh, S and then say 1 and hit input. Uh, and we can use the get menu uh, to create a new series or switch to an existing series by name. Uh, but we can enter a series of numbers now, let's say uh, 5, 10, uh, 50, and 80. And uh, now if we hit the calc menu, uh, we can uh, get menu items for uh, total, mean, median, uh, standard deviation, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, the FRCST uh, menu displays uh, a series of options uh, for two number lists. Uh, so uh, here you uh, pick two series for X and Y variables, uh, and there's a bunch of options around regression and so on. And so the statistics app is really easy to use. And uh, the time value of money app uh, allows you to solve the usual financial problems such as compounding interest and amortization. You can enter any four variable values and uh, solve for a fifth. And interestingly, in a way, uh, it's actually not providing any additional functionality uh, that you couldn't do through the solver. Uh, and there's also a time uh, menu for date arithmetic, uh, which is quite useful. Uh, so you can set values for date one and date two. Uh, so uh, let's set, uh, we'll hit the today uh, menu item to uh, pick today, and then we'll um, hit date one uh, to set date one as today. Uh, and then we can uh, set, let's say, uh, the 1st of July next year um, as date two. Uh, 
Uh, so we enter that um, 07 uh, for the month and then 01 uh, 2022 20, uh, and then hit date 2. Uh, and now we can hit the days key to see the number of days between date 1 and date 2 using the, uh, using the actual calendar that recognizes leap years. Uh, you can also use a, a 360 uh, day year or a 365 day year. Uh, and to add or subtract uh, a number of days uh, from date 1, uh, you can enter uh, the, d the days, uh, so let's say 90, uh, into the days field uh, and then hit date 2. Uh, and having date arithmetic is a useful function uh, that, say, the 42S uh, doesn't have. Uh, and the time app also supports setting up of reminders for appointments uh, that trigger a beep on the calendar. And if we can move through the other uh, menu keys quickly, uh, there's a base menu uh, that allows you to do uh, integer arithmetic in hex, octal, or binary. Uh, there's a probability menu. Uh, that lets you calculate combinations, permutations, factorials, uh, and also provides random numbers. Uh, the hypermenu provides uh, hyperbolic uh, trigonometric operations. Uh, there's also a convert menu, uh, which supports conversion of angles between degrees and radians and uh, hours, minutes, seconds. Uh, and this also uh, supports uh, conversion of x and y coordinates to polar. Uh, and you can also switch the calculator between degrees and radians. Uh, the percentage change menu is another solver-like menu where you can solve uh, problems related to percentages. And uh, the parts menu allows you to find integer and floating point components of a number. And also uh, find the absolute value. Uh, the modes menu uh, allows you to set uh, the display format, uh, fix scientific uh, or engineering uh, and so on. And the 27S doesn't support keystroke programming, but it does have the HP solver. And so the solver lets you store equations and solve uh, each equation for any variable. And the nice thing about the solver is that it doesn't really require a lot of specialist knowledge to use. Uh, so if we hit blue shift 7, I uh, will enter the solver. And you can see I've already entered my favorite simple example, uh, the full distance equation that calculates the distance an object falls under gravity and time t. So that's uh, distance equals half times uh, g uh, times uh, time squared. And so once that's entered, uh, we can just hit the calc button. Uh, and here uh, we can either solve for t or uh, d. Uh, so let's enter, say, a time. Uh, so we'll enter 10 uh, and set that up as t. And now I can hit the d key uh, to um, see that an object will fall um, for 90 meters in 10 seconds. Uh, and you can also set d. Uh, so let's say a kilometer and solve for t. Uh, and the solver supports uh, equations using any function that you can access through the keyboard or menus, as well as some uh, special solver-only functions. And the solver uses two methods to find solutions. So uh, first tries to find a direct solution by rearranging the equation to isolate uh, for the unknown. Uh, but if a direct solution can't be found, it uses an iterative process to search for a solution. Uh, and so I've got another equation uh, set up, uh, y equals sine x plus cos x. And so uh, we can populate x uh, and then uh, solve uh, easily uh, for a direct solution for y. Uh, so uh, let's set uh, x as 45. And if, if we hit y, we can see that the solver uh, immediately comes up with a value for y. Uh, but say if we set a value for y, uh, then the solver will need to use an iterative process to solve for x. So uh, let's set y to 1.5 uh, and we'll hit the x key. Uh, and uh, while it does this, uh, you, you can see uh, the current values for the left and right sides of the equation as it searches uh, through the solution space. 
And the solver on the 27S also supports conditional expressions and sigma expressions within equations. And uh, a nice example of this can be seen in the Taylor series uh, for the sine of x. And this is an infinite series of terms, uh, but we can stop, uh, say, after the first uh, 10 terms to get an estimate. Uh, and uh, so to calculate the series, we can use the solver's sigma expression. And sigma takes a number of arguments. So the first one is uh, the variable i will be looping over. Uh, then there's the start and end values and uh, the amount to increment uh, after every loop. Uh, and then there's the equation uh, to sum. Uh, and for this equation, I'm using the solver's uh, conditional if expression. Uh, so this if expression uh, basically uh, determines whether i is odds or even and evaluates to 1 or negative 1. And I could replace this with uh, negative 1 to the power of i. Uh, and the expression also uses uh, the factorial function to calculate the denominator of the uh, equation. And so to run this, uh, we can go calc and then we'll set last to uh, 10. Uh, and uh, let's calculate the sign for, uh, let's say, pi over 2 uh, radians, which is 90 degrees. Uh, and so the combination of uh, sigma expressions and uh, conditionals makes the solver expressions pretty uh, expressive. And I know, I uh, should note that um, if and sigma can both be nested. Uh, but the solver uh, also um, has two advanced functions that are not documented in the user manual uh, but are outlined in, in a separate booklet HP published in 1988. Uh, and the let and get functions allows uh, assigning and retrieving of intermediate variable values from within a solver expression. Uh, and these uh, variables uh, will not appear as variables in the solver menu. And intermediate variables are useful for simplifying expressions that occur multiple times in a formula. Uh, so for example, uh, we can use uh, the let and get uh, functions uh, to simplify our previous solver uh, equation. Uh, and um, I guess because the expression 2 times i plus 1 is used uh, multiple times uh, in the solver equation, uh, we can actually assign that to a temporary variable and access that uh, later uh, within the equation. Uh, I've also simplified the if expression uh, in this version and uh, replaced it by negative 1 to the power of i. And so, uh, if we run this version, uh, we'll see that uh, the t variable doesn't appear in the solver menu. Uh, and we can enter last uh, and uh, let's say pi over 2 again uh, into x. Uh, and we should get the same value. And uh, with the solver, you can have different logic uh, based on which variable you're solving for uh, using the s function. Uh, and you can also solve for multiple variables at a time. And I'll include a link in the notes to a document that talks about uh, these advanced techniques. And so the 27S was a high-end algebraic calculator uh, from the Pioneer series. It has the reputation amongst many of being the best algebraic calculator. Um, HP ever released. For me it's a, the strength of the 27S. It is, it's one of the easiest calculators to use since it's primarily menu based and I really like the power of the solver. Uh, the 27S is not easy to find these days and they do fetch quite high prices on eBay. Only the 42S from the Pioneer series um, being more expensive. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.